started the stream. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Fresh Dental Shadowing. Today we have Dr. Marsh, and today she will be giving us a presentation about her journey in dentistry. So you can go ahead and take it away. Fresh Dental Shadowing for having me. Uh, it's an honor to be here. I know I can't see anyone's faces, but I'm really excited to be here. And I just wanted to take a moment to say really congratulations to all of you for having gotten this far, uh, for being here, for listening to these presentations, for um, really coming this far in your career. Um, that is a, that is meant to your, um, to just, you know, how, how far you've come and uh, to the people that have really nurtured your interests, the mentors meant to your, um, to just, you know, how, how far, um, let's start a little bit about me, um, so, So um, I'm a general dentist, and I uh, I work at Esperanza Health Center. It's a federally supported Philadelphia. So I'll begin to tell you guys a little bit about my background, how it all started, how my journey started. So um, what we will discuss is why dentistry is really my background, my education. Uh, my experience as a general dentist in public health, and uh, we'll go through just some brief patient cases and then some advice um, that I can share with you guys um, if somebody was um, sharing these with me brief patients starting all over again. And then some advice. So, why dentistry? Okay, so I came to the United States as, uh, as an adolescent with my family. Armenia. So I'm an immigrant. And um, so as an immigrant, um, having come to a new country, going through all these different changes, seeing how hard my parents worked, um, that instilled in me a sort of a desire to just really work hard and to, to chase my dreams, uh, as I saw my parents doing. Um, I have absolutely no, uh, no ties to dentistry. I have no family. Dentistry, uh, but uh, I have um, I was exposed very very early to healthcare. Uh, my mother is a GYN. Uh, my my father is a theoretical physicist. Um, theoretical endocrine physicist, and and you know my my grandmother, uh, my mother's side, uh, she was an Armenian physician and researcher who was a pioneer in the field of nutritional hygiene and improvement of public health and wellness in Armenia. So. I came from a, an incredible background of, of physicians and scientists. So, to me, um, I knew right away that I was that I would walk in those footsteps. That I knew that right away that I would follow uh, in the in the field of healthcare. Um, yet, I I had a love of the arts. Um, I I felt I found myself drawing and painting often as a young kid. Um, and that, to me, was, was my passion. And I would always tell everybody, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be an artist. Um, but healthcare always pulled me, because that's what I've always known. And so um, my mother uh, decided to kind of throw in there that, hey, why don't you uh, shadow and observe a dentist? Um, you know, she said, dentistry is such a, a beautiful connection between the arts and healthcare and science. So I think you'd like it. And I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I'm coming from a different country. I don't like brushing my teeth. You know, I, I have a lot of cavities, you know, and having seen so much disparity in, the, in you know, dental care in, in, in my country where, you know, people don't really put dentistry first, it wasn't really something that I put with first. And so I did. Um, I shadowed a dentist. It was a, she, he was a general general dentist, and uh, and that's where it all started for me. Um, I really saw how how incredibly meticulous you could be um, while you are restoring a completely 
destroyed to uh, carry us to uh, to build it, rebuild it, to uh, rebuild shape, function, uh, and and that to me was was fascinating. And so I began to continue to uh, chase that dream from the very beginning. But I also continued to pursue my love of the arts, um, and as you can, as I'll talk a little later about my uh, my career in undergraduate school. Uh, so that's how be I, I became interested in, in dentistry, just by shadowing, just like every one of you is doing, um, learning a little bit about dentistry from all these different incredible presenters and their journey. And, and um, so kudos to you, it's awesome that you're doing that. That's how you learn. Um, so my education started um, in undergraduate school. I went to Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. And um, I started my biology degree. Uh, it was a biology degree, just like a lot of um, pre-dental students are. And because I had found this new interest and I had completely focused myself, completely um, just dived into this, I'm gonna be a dentist because it, it connects my love of arts and, and medicine and healthcare all in one. This is all I wanna do. Um, I decided to enroll in um, a second uh, bachelor's program uh, in dental hygiene uh, at the Oakland University as well. So I simultaneously uh, pursued a double um, double degree in, in biology at the and with dental hygiene, um, you know, it really it opened a completely different world for me. Um, it, it really it focused on one of the most common diseases of the oral cavity and a major cause of tooth loss, and that is periodontal disease. Now, this was completely different from rebuilding a tooth. This was a whole different world of, 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 of microbiology to me and how the, the body, the host defense, is able to um, evade or it, how microorganisms are able to evade host immunity and how my pathologic microorganisms are able to destroy uh, our, our body. And that intricate dance between pathogenic microflora and host immune response was, was fascinating. And um, so I, I spent um, all of my time basically uh, in dental hygiene school uh, really focusing on this on my career as a, as a dental hygienist and really diving into um, the science of what I was learning. And uh, I became so involved that, that I, I pursued a, um, uh, research uh, as well in dental hygiene school. I was a research assistant. And um, and this this kind of began my, uh, the, the way I, I, I continued my whole career is, uh, I began to kind of look at um, clinical concerns with uh, research-driven academic uh, questions, and where research, to me, uh, became a very important aspect uh, of academia and, and what I was learning. And, and so, um, so I, I, I spent um, all two years as a research, research assistant um, in, in a dental hygiene department. And um, with my career in dental hygiene, it also opened up the doors to uh, public health for me. So uh, as, a, as a dental hygienist, I began to volunteer in different clinics in my community and uh, going to different mission trips, um, specifically with the Christian Dental Society. And, uh, you know, I, I really found my calling um, in this subspecialty of dentistry. And, uh, and I knew that I, that I had to uh, that had to continue, that I had to apply to dental school. Um, now, um, I applied to dental school <laughs> right away after dental hygiene, and um, I had a GPA, of, a cumulative GPA, um, a science GPA of 3.4, and a cumulative GPA of 3.5. I had a DAT score of 18, so you can see it's a, a very average, uh, average staff. And even with a double degree, with research and community service, it really wasn't enough uh, for me to get in. And 
so I was actually waitlisted and um, denied acceptance um, when I applied after all my dream school. So, you know, and that was uh, a huge setback, right? So as we all, and we all will experience There's a, there's a turning point where we decide whether we want that to define us or whether we want that to help us grow um, and, and for those failures not to define us, right? And so, um, and that's I, I, why I decided to share all, share this with you guys is because um, there's three things that you really need to keep in mind when these things happen is you need to push through and, and, and keep focus on on, uh, on your goals, um, and and that that means sacrifice, persistence, and perseverance. And so, and, you know, I, I made a list of things that I needed to improve about my application, and that would be my AT score, my GPA, um, and overall, it you know it, it helps to um, develop me as an applicant. A, a more disciplined applicant, a, a more mature applicant, and it really grew grit, right? So within these, uh, within this gap year, uh, if you will, um, I worked as a hygienist in private practice, and I also continued uh, my public outreach and uh, Mission of Mercy project, the uh, non for profit organization that does um, these uh, isolated. Uh, events that bring the, the, where people come in and they receive health care, dental care, uh, and other care. Um, so I volunteered at these events. Um, I continued to go to dental mission trips as a um, registered, dental, registered dental hygienist. So at, 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 one, at one point, um, you, have to, you have to decide, OK, how do I increase my, my GPA? Um, and so uh, I enrolled in a uh, master's program, yeah. and so you know, going forward as an applicant, um, you, you know, if you have setbacks, um, you know, you, you have to you have to figure out how to improve your application, and and that may mean um, doing a graduate program, uh, going and getting your master's, and proving to dental schools that you are capable of taking on a. Uh, master's level curriculum, didactic and um, and that's okay, and and, and that will uh, make you that much more prepared for dental school, and, and um, make you a, a stronger candidate. Um, and that's what I did. I went to uh, Drexel University College of Medicine, and I did a, a master's degree in interdisciplinary health sciences, uh, sciences with a uh, focus on pharmacology and biology. Um, again, I did research. Um, uh, in the Department of Pharmacology and Physiology um, uh, with an amazing faculty and and really, again, uh, focusing on this on this love of research and on uh, really approaching these questions, um, in, in, uh, the research-driven questions. And, um, and yeah, and I continued to work as a, as a, uh, as a hygienist part-time pay off bills and live in a city and um, I was tutoring and um, and I just retook my DAT score uh, DAT so and I uh, and it incre increased uh, my score to a 23 average so it's it's doable uh, and a lot of people say you you really you know you can only take the DAT three times and you're really not going to increase your score very much that's why they do it three times because research is showing that people don't but you can um, and this was my third time taking it and I significantly improved it right so um, you can do it <laughs> I did it you can do it um, and it just again it just takes commitment perseverance and um, just focus um, and, and it really means just prioritizing yourself prioritizing 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 and yeah, and, and then I applied again um, to dental school, and I was accepted to five different schools, and um, I chose Western University College of Dental Medicine, um, and um, 
I started there. <laughs> uh, and that's in uh, Pomona, California. Um, so, you know, you might ask, why did I choose uh, Western U? And um, it was an incredibly innovative curriculum. Um, I love the, uh, the first year didactic courses uh, that were being taught with the medical school. It was a cadaver-based um, anatomy lab. Uh, you had early clinical introduction. Uh, I was a hygienist already, so uh, I really wanted to start dentistry right away. And um, so, it, and, 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 and it, like I said, it, it had a very strong general dentistry case exposure uh, right away because it, it didn't have uh, specialty programs and, and um, it had um, very strong uh, clinical faculty representations from the, all, the, all the different specialties. Um, and so the, the general dentistry student had the opportunity to take on all cases that came in. So the opportunity to treat diverse clinical cases with excellent faculty representation. Um, and in honesty, I am so proud of that decision um, because it, it really, um, it, really it really made me who I am today. Um, it gave me the clinical skills <clears throat> That have made me so successful in clinical practice and um, have really pushed me to be um, outside the box um, to be innovative to think um, to really think about what i'm doing instead of being very mechanical and um, yeah and it has really um, given me the opportunity to stay in touch with so many amazing faculty that have made the same choices um, to teach at a at a younger institution um, versus a you know an older well-known place. So um, I also wanted to touch up on something that's really, I think is very unique and interesting. Um, uh, when, I, when I was accepted in, in dental school, um, I was also burdened, like many of you are, with, uh, with the thought of, oh my gosh, school is going to be so expensive. You know, uh, I accepted a, a private school and um, Western U, it's almost a hundred thousand, um, a hundred thousand dollars a year of tuition, um, expenses, and you know all these all different things that come with that. And so, I I knew I had to apply to a scholarship um, because I was already an older applicant, right? Already uh, four years out of school. So, I looked through my scholarship options, and I. I applied to the National Health Service Corps Scholarship. So this is a, it's a federal scholarship um, and for students pursuing primary, specifically primary health care professionals, right? Um, you know, um, in return uh, for the scholarship, uh, the graduates then provide uh, primary health services in health professional shortage areas. And that means in FQHCs and specifically in FQHCs and um, health professional shortage, shortage areas. The scholarship is extremely competitive, uh, and it's dependent on funding based on the different administration that um, that, that is is in power at that time. Um, and it pays for educational expenses, and it even gives you a stipend up to four years. Up to four years. That means you can receive the scholarship uh, before you start dental school, or you can apply to the scholarship when you are in dental school. And you have to be enrolled or accepted, like I said, up to a, um, in a full time as a full time student, right? So you you can apply um, while you're enrolled, or you can apply while you're. Um, the one caveat here is that you cannot uh, pursue um, graduate uh, postgraduate program, right? And so if you are committed to a career in primary care and working in underserved communities, completely and fully committed with all your heart, then I would say absolutely, this will be an incredible opportunity. Um, but if you if you have even a small part of you that that might want to pursue residency, and, and, and what many of you will not know that until you start dental school, and that's fair. And that's what, you know, for me, um, I was so driven and, and, and so focused on getting into dental school because that was that was my door um, to then uh, to pursue other avenues, to pursue other interests. For me, uh, it's the journey that matters, and it's always been that way. For me, it's the journey; it's not the destination. And that, and I hope that uh, you guys get a little bit of that for my presentation. Um, you know, 
for me, it was getting into dental school and moving myself through and seeing where life takes me. And, um, you know, and at the end of the day, if, if that meant specialty for me, um, then, um, then I would pursue that after my commitment. I knew public health uh, always had a big part in my life and it always will. Um, you know, being an immigrant student, uh, you know, having seen my family uh, be disadvantaged in the healthcare uh, field and, you know, to seek healthcare, uh, uh, you know. So for me, it's, you know, I, I have a heart for, for, uh, for that population. And so either way, um, I knew that's what I, would, I wanted to do. And so I applied and I was accepted for a four-year scholarship and school was paid for. That is awesome. in dental school um, because Western U was very focused on um, public health. Um, you know, we we had a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities to um, to treat patients in a public health setting. So we went to different clinics um, uh, within the community and spent lots of time there and, and lots of time uh, treating patients different different um, types of patients with um, with chronic illnesses with disabilities um, and, you know um, it, with the Sacramento Native American Health Center um, you know, native native patients and um, in dental school is really where uh, m me as a student lived um, I was very involved in leadership um, I was very involved in research. Um, I think again, for me, um, I already had a bit of experience coming into dental school. I was, um, I like to think I was a mature student and um, I was focused and, you know, I could take on these, um, uh, these different avenues. Um, I felt comfortable taking on um, different, li different leadership roles, um, uh, creating different organizations. And, uh, and that was fun for me, and that was exciting for me. And also realizing that this is my profession, and um, you know, I had to you know, learn how to um, take part in that. And uh, a big part of that was advocacy for me um, uh, as I took on the role of ASDA uh, legislative liaison. So ASDA is the American Student Dental Association. Every uh, school has a chapter. And you know, I would encourage every single person, every every student, to be part of um, these organized dentistry organizations because they really will open up the doors for you and really teach you what role you can take as a dentist, change things in you know in your field, um, in your career, um, and that would mean you know advocating um, for for things that matter to you, um, whether that's public health. Uh, whether it's student loans, <laughs> you know, and, and so those are uh, really big, uh, big topics. So, and of course, uh, mission trips continue to be a big part of my life. Uh, in dental school, I continued to go to Jamaica to mission trips to the, with the Christian Dental Society. Uh, I brought my dental school uh, uh, class uh, to Jamaica uh, twice there, and so it was a it was just a really rich uh, time at dental school and um, and yeah and once and once you're there really it's um, it's you know I always say the hardest part is just getting in right it's just it's just the really hardest part is just getting in and once you're there you're really gonna be able to take so um, take on so many opportunities and, and you should um, because of those four years go by so quickly. Uh, yeah, and, and um, throughout my um, my time in dental school, I realized that I couldn't shake my love of um, of perio, uh, my love of perio, uh, of perio. And so, um, with my background in dental hygiene uh, and having you know kind of rotated through um, and taken different externships. Um, 
at the uh, University of California uh, Veterans Hospital West LA, uh, you know, seeing all the different uh, procedures that uh, is done are done in perio. Um, I, I, I couldn't shake it. That was my background. That was my first love, and um, and I teamed up with um, an incredible mentor, um, Dr. Thomas Kebek, with whom I we created a um, preferred ontology interest group, and um, you know, we brought in speakers and we uh, we talked about different cases. And so, um, in the greater part of my third year, all the, on towards my fourth year. Um, I realized I want to go to specialty, but I couldn't, right? So kind of you're stuck and have to uh, go on. And so once again, uh, with my journey, you just make the best um, and you do the best um, at that point and, um, and you, uh, yeah, you take on your uh, next step, next career step. So I began as a general dentist at Esperanza Health Center. And, um, you know, I researched a little bit about the different health centers that I could have applied, and I applied to different places. And ultimately, the one that stood out for me was this particular health center. Um, it was in Philadelphia. I lived in Philadelphia, so uh, going back to Philadelphia wasn't a big deal. Um, but I never knew that Philadelphia uh, had so much poverty and so much pain and so much hardship and you know we, we talk about um, we talk about mission trips and we talk about going and helping other people in different countries what we really don't realize is that there are so many people in need in our own country and we never see this and, um, and so I you know yes I had volunteered I had worked as a dental student in different public health clinics this was different um, there was a different, there was a different tone uh, in, in this community. And this community was ravaged by poverty and drug abuse. Um, and drug abuse, uh, that was shocking to me, uh, shocking. Heroin use uh, in the community that I work with is not only um, a part of people's lives, um, but it, it is what destroys people's lives. Every single person in this community that I work with has a story of someone that they have lost to drug abuse, um, either with overdose or being taken to jail um, because of selling drugs. And so as a, as a tiny little general dentist with absolutely no experience with this, I started uh, at Esperanza Health. Um, and we are, it's a nonprofit health center and it's inter interdisciplinary um, access to health and wellness. We have medical doctors, we have behavioral health specialists, we have an incredible um, medically, medical therapy assisted um, team where um, Suboxone is given to patients to help them recover um, through their addiction. And, and yes, if you know anything about Philadelphia, we're located in the city, uh, in the city's Kensington. And we are a very busy, busy dental practice. Um, it's that uh, we do comprehensive trauma-informed dental care. What is trauma-informed dental care? Well, as I mentioned, um, the patients that we see are experiencing and have experienced trauma all of their life. And trauma in different forms, whether it's abuse, um, you know, physical, mental, you know, sexual, um, so, as a dentist, treating patients, you know, we have to become really cognizant of where our patients are coming from and what their experiences are and how they're feeling when we are coming so close to them. Um, and so, all these things became a really big, um, big thing and, and, and something that you really start to think about how you move your body, how you talk, how you touch the patient, uh, what you say. And so these are all concepts of trauma-informed care. Um, so a little bit about our, our clinic. Um, we are an incredible practice because we're, we do so much for the community as a dental team, um, more than um, 
so many dental clinics of any dental clinic in Philadelphia, the public health clinic. Um, we treatment plan complex inter interdisciplinary cases, um, and we provide treatment care uh, for patients with advanced periodontal disease, um, and we and we direct care for and with patients uh, for patients with advanced periodontal disease. That means that um, we we have this uh, very robust referral system with different um, with different uh, dental schools in the in the area. We have Temple University and University of Pennsylvania. We have Einstein. So. Um, uh, specifically for surgical care um, uh, to to um, in care for periodontal disease, um, and of course we do direct uh, composite restorations. Um, I do a lot of impacted wisdom teeth, or a lot of just you know <laughs> non erupted teeth extraction. Um, we do removable and fixed prosthodontics as well. We uh, we do offer. Um, Zirconia crowns, Emax crowns, even PF, PFM crowns. If I'm doing um, a survey crown, for example, that will help um, with my with the retention of my uh, removable uh, prosthesis and partial denture, metal frame or partial denture. And so all these things, you know, um, are incredible services for patients, and they wouldn't be able to get that really anywhere else. I'm so sorry for the darkness. I really didn't think about turning on the light. Um, we also do. Um, do provide endodontic therapy. We do root canals at our clinic, and a lot of public health clinics don't do that, um, and we do. And so I'm really, um, I'm really thankful to to be, to be working for a clinic that um, offers so much and allows clinicians such as myself to really decide where we feel comfortable and what we feel comfortable providing. And that's one thing that I really want to want to instill on you guys is that. If you're not happy where you are, if you are compromising care, if you know, if you are asked to do something that you don't feel comfortable with, get out. <laughs> that is not the place for you. You need to be. You need to be doing things with the the highest level um, of, 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 of of you know uh, clinical practice, and you need to be proud of your work. And um, don't feel like you you can you are stuck and you you're not. And so, as a general dentist, um, with with a love of per periodontal health, uh, with restoring periodontal health, um, I focus very closely on um, on patients with uh, advanced periodontal disease um, at Esperanza Health Center. So, um, I focus a very much on patient education, uh, and you will hear this a lot in dentistry with all professions. We really need to focus on patient education, patient education. Um, not only just patient education, but also uh, the dental team education on how to, you know, recognize the etiology of disease and progression of periodontal disease, and when to offer treatment options and maintenance intervals. And right. So um, <laughs> as I've been working with periodontal, uh, with patients with advanced periodontal disease, I've also um, felt this really. Uh, pull towards uh, recovering addicts, and um, and I uh, began an integration, a, a, a collaboration with um, the MAT program, uh, medication assisted therapy program. Um, so this is this is a, a program that uh, is housed in our clinic, and uh, they have patients um, that are recovering that have made the choice to come out of their of their you know um, you know jail um, of, of their addiction and to try um, to, to to live a, live a normal life um, and they've made that conscious decision and they go through this this program um, it's very similar to a 12-step program with AA and um, and so I became really interested in uh, bringing these patients um, into the dental program and seeing them as dental patients. Because before um, uh, my initiation, that that was not present. Uh, and so we saw our own patients, they saw their own patients in cell phone. I began this collaboration um, to really give this access to patients that's paranatic. And that has been 
um, an ongoing process and um, a very rewarding process for me. Um, and so, again, uh, you know, you can still pursue your love, whatever love of specialty that you have as a general dentist, because at the end of the day, we all specialize. No matter what you do, if you're a general dentist, if you're a periodontist, you're an endodontist, you're all going to specialize. Um, because you know, you find what you love, you just do that. <laughs> it's very difficult to do everything. Uh, it's very, very difficult to, to be the best at everything. Um, so at the end of the day, um, you know, you will, you will focus on one thing or another. Okay, um, I'm trying to go fast because I, I don't know how much time for. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to share a few cases with you guys. Um, so, um, here, the first picture you guys see um, is a patient that came in um, with a dark tooth. And she is this beautiful girl, young girl. She, my tooth. And so, you know, we did exam, we do people work up, and you know, the tooth is necrotic. And test necrotic, she has a pair of choroidalucency, asymptomatic. We do a root canal on it, and um, and then we internally bleach it. Um, we internally bleach the tooth, and we do this twice. It's walking bleach, and you'll learn more about that. So just put the sodium perborate as a um, solution. And it just makes it saline, and you put it right in, and um, the patient um, walks with it for three weeks, and we do this twice, and voila! And the tooth just whitened, and she was very happy with it. No, uh, no drilling, no, um, no prepping, no crown, no veneer, nothing. Uh, just perfect. The second picture, uh, a case that you know comes in quite often, and we, and believe it or not, you know, uh, patients will come in and say, "Yeah, okay, I need the tooth pulled. I understand, but I don't want to go without teeth." You've been without teeth all this time. You mean you don't want to go? Okay. Um, they don't want teeth. They don't want to go without teeth. And so we make these inter intermediate type of appliances um, at the t and we deliver it at the time of the surgery, so that it almost acts as band aid. Um, and they wear it and um, and they go home with teeth. And obviously, with the understanding that um, as they heal and as other treatments completed. Other, um, other tooth replacement uh, will need to be done. So either we refer them out for implant placement or we do a uh, definitive um, partial venture. And then, um, and that, that's another thing, guys, we don't, uh, the public health still doesn't do implants. <laughs> so, you know, maybe uh, when implants became so, it becomes so uh, mainstream, um, like composite resin, Maybe in the future, public health could be placing um, implants. But at the moment, uh, we're not. We're, we, I don't know of any uh, any uh, public health institutions that, that do place implants. Um, and that's the pretty much the only thing that we don't do. <laughs> um, the third picture here, we see this one all the time. Patients coming in with large, large fractures, large carious lesions, and this is all over their mouth, and specifically in this example, it's just that, it's that molar. And so I've always practiced um, this saving a tooth, save a tooth if you can, save a tooth, save a tooth. Um, again, my my heart is in perio, so I save teeth, I save teeth. I don't like pulling teeth out if I don't have to. So, um, and here, you know, we do the root canal, and I literally rebuild this tooth with a composite um, and you know one of the other things that, that is really incredible is that in my in my public health clinic I'm able to order whatever composite I want uh, the latest the best the ones that the, the best are, are using I'm ordering and trying and I'm really I'm really loving that freedom um, and yeah okay so then the, here in the First picture here is an example of quite advanced periodontal disease, right? You can see these teeth have super erupted, um, 
on the bottom and um, so you, you see I don't know how much how well you can see but you can see that the, the tartar build up um, on their teeth over their gums so this like dramatic uh, build up um, and you know after you clean all that up wow there's teeth under there they're beautiful they're white they're clean and it and it really just um, it, it really impresses on the patient that they can do better and and they do better and they really do better um, and then the middle picture here was a patient really striking uh, situation here all his caries are root caries root caries um, below the gingival margin so for this patient there's a lot of <laughs> rubber dam use and movement of the gums trying to pull and trying to re you know remove these caries and restoring so you can see how beautiful he looks um, after uh, these caries are restored and we restore um, a better shape to the teeth and so that he can, you know, um, he looked, he loved it. He was very happy. And then um, the other patient next to it is, um, it's actually, you know, it looks like a dark tooth, but it is not a root canal treated tooth. And there was no reason to treat the tooth with root canal. And, and but it had a very stained, um, all colors off composite restoration if more than 30 percent of the tooth was fractured for this patient so when we removed when i removed the entire composite that was there the tooth was actually really nice and white <laughs> so i was able to just block out all the darkness of the tooth and um, restore the tooth uh, with a polychromatic uh, composite resin approach um, and I was even able to do some gingivectomy there to kind of raise her gum up uh, to match. Um, so yes, you're able to do, you know, where, where your passions are, you're able to do it, you should do it. You should do it, you should, you should um, give that service to the patient. Um, okay, um, last but not least. Okay, so here you have another really broken down tooth and again, for this particular tooth, root canal, post, and yes, we use fiber post, uh, fiber post uh, in, my, in our practice, and so we do, we build the tooth, and then um, most likely that we will go into uh, either making a, a crown for her, um, most likely. But again, you know, you, you kind of think about uh, patients' finances, right? So the clinic that I work in, um, it's all, public health care so they're coming in with medicaid medicare um public publicly funded uh health insurances um and we also do use a sliding fee scale right based on their income and where they fall in the poverty line we we give them a sliding fee so a lot of these patients will pay very very little i mean you know <laughs> We're talking fifteen dollars for a visit, uh, and for whatever we do, and so it is a really incredible thing. And I say this to my friends, and they're like, "What?" Um, but yes, and depending on this institution, they're really able to subsidize the cost and really able to provide these services to patients because you know, yes, we are there and we're there to help, and, and we are proud to be part of that. Uh, the middle uh, middle patient here. Uh, incredible case with this guy, um, recovering heroin addict, uh, just had been uh, in this situation for a very long time. And so when I saw him and I met him, you know, young guy, I just pulled a smile. I just, you know, I my, my teeth, like, so, you know, um, very complex, very, very deep, deep, deep carries and you know, I'm not um, I'm not accustomed to taking photographs all the time, and so um, I try to be a little better about taking my, my taking photographs. But we, when you see when these this decay is removed, I mean, there's almost no tooth left, and there's almost a characteristic with the way uh, with her, with the way heroin addicts with the way decay uh, appears in heroin addicts. I mean, with any addict, uh, a drug abuse, I mean, it's very interesting. It, it's this. It, 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 almost it's been happening for so so long the nerves recede and in some of these cases we don't do any root canals um in patients don't 
uh, you know, they're not symptomatic and they don't show. Um, and so they're so deep and in the normal, normal person, you would think, oh my gosh, but no. Um, so it's very interesting how this like this necrosis and this long term chronic decay um, acts. And so we restored his teeth, only the top and only some teeth here in this case, from ongoing treatment. Some of this treatment goes on for a long time. Um, the last patient, um, I just wanted to show that even in public health, you do top, what this is about you as a clinician, um, not about where you work, it's about you, it's your work, this is your signature, so you better do it right. Um, and so uh, that's, that's what you're gonna be remembered by. You want to make sure that that patient keeps your filling for 15 years, because I have fillings in my mouth that my dentist did for 15 years. And, they're going. And so you want to be that dentist. Um, and, and that means do not um, sacrifice your, your, your ethics. Um, you know, standard of care needs to be at the top. And use the right materials, use the best materials. Um, rubber dam, <laughs> control, pumice, get rid of, you know, your, um, you know, your plaque. And so really pay attention. Um, uh, and then just two more cases here. Um, this is another patient with um, really just almost look like a collapsed dentition. Um, and we did a really um, just a temporary kind of intermediate uh, partial venture. And we will be working on um, possibly opening her bite and trying to um, reconstruct her, her mouth. And so the next one, we also see pediatric patients. We don't have nitrous oxide at our clinic. Um, we only do local anesthesia and patient management, lots of patient management. Um, but uh, we do see kids, and a lot of kids do really well. And um, yeah, and um, in this case, um, I used MTA, device correct material, and to do a phlebotomy, and to hopefully allow that uh, pulp tissue in the root to keep keep there and, and allow that root to grow and close that apex of root. So we are doing regenerative kind of uh, work as well, um, keeping in mind the young adult teeth, right? So public health, doesn't matter. You are doing the work that you want to do. And it's, it's all about finding um, the, the institution that will, um, that will nurture that. Lastly, my advice. Um, again, like I said, it's a journey that matters and not your destination. Allow yourself to, to move through life, to move through your academic journey um, just one day at a time. Yes, put it on goals, but don't be defeated um, by failure. Um, and allow that, and allow the movement to be organic. Um, do not give up or ignore your mission, no matter what happens. Because in the end, it'll make you stronger, better, it will just give you um, a completely different perspective on than what you end up doing. Um, failure is inevitable. We learn with failure. Um, we require pain in order to grow. <laughs> a muscle fiber must break in order to grow. So remember, um, it's good. <laughs> you you got to get. You got to. You got to go through it uh, to learn. Find mentors. Um, find mentors. Find mentors. People that are going to push you. People that are going to motivate you. People that are going to be right behind you every step of the way. That are going to teach you. That are, you know, and and I have mentors in my life that that have continuously pushed me and continue to do that. And I'm so, so thankful for them because without them, I'm afraid that I wouldn't continue to pursue um, some of the things that I want to pursue. Because you, you, fall, you fall prey to difficulty. You fall prey to everyday life. You know, as you grow, things happen, you know. And you realize, ah, eh, it's okay, I'm fine. I'm good where I am. You know, and they remind you of who you are and what you're capable of. And, and and that's what I hope to be someday to some other some, uh, some, some students, other students. 
this is really important, practice positive self-talk. As a dentist, we are all very type A, very driven, highly driven people, and we tend to be really hard on ourselves. Stop that. <laughs> practice positive self-talk. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, you are amazing. You've gotten this far because you, you know, you've had the support, you've had, you know, whatever is behind you, you've got this. And, and that, that's what's going to help you to move forward. Take care of your body and your mental health. Again, as dentists, we have a really hard job. Patients don't like us. They make it a really big point to tell you they don't like the dentist. And, you know, things break, things can break, things can fail, and that's okay. No matter how hard you work, sometimes that will happen. And don't let it define you. Don't let that ruin your day. Don't let that, have, you know, ruin how you feel about yourself. Work out, go, do yoga, do something, that eat healthy, do, do things that are healthy for you. Prioritize and manage your time. So, you know, as you learn from different speakers and the, the advices that they give, you know, a lot will, uh, many will say prioritize, many will say manage. For me, it's been primarily prioritizing my time. It's, for me, managing my time, it's great. I can manage it to the hour, but at the end of the day, there are some things that I like more than other things. And as a human being, I'm going to end up spending a little bit more time doing one thing versus the other thing without my knowledge because there's ultimately there's no one in my head telling me that I have to stay and maybe I don't I, I don't have that kind of discipline and so for me it was prioritizing so I would say I am working on this paper today tonight and that's it I am not going out I am not you know doing I'm not doing anything but this I'm gonna focus my entire time because for me I need to focus 100% of, the, of my time to one thing in order to be successful because that's just the person I am. Um, and so you've got to learn who, who you are and how you operate and what you do and you keep these things in mind. Sleep. Sleep is a really big thing. I know you guys will not get sleep all the time or get a lot of it, but you need it. And to decide and realize what kind of person you are. Are you a nighttime person? Are you a morning person? and make those decisions. Go to sleep early, wake up early, okay? Um, that's, that's kind of what I do. Um, get involved and stay connected, really important. Um, take on all the opportunities that you have in front of you and, and, and be involved in organizations, be involved as a leader. Um, go to mission trips, create mission trips, make opportunities. If there are no opportunities, create them, you know, that's, you are a leader, you already are there. And do not be afraid to change your path if you're unhappy. And that is really important because you will be doing this for the rest of your life. And don't think that just because you're a dentist you need to be a clinician. No, and I think as you guys hear a lot of uh, you know, dentists present, you know, you see such a colorful variety of people that have been doing different things, you know, you can create an app, you can help dentists find, you know, associates, <laughs> um, find offices, you can go work for a, um, you know, an insurance company as a consultant, you can um, be a, a professor. There are, once you, you are a, a dentist, like right? you, 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 it's open for you and you can, you can do it, you can do whatever it is that you have and with that uh, I wanted to share my social media handle I'm not always very active <laughs> because I have a lot of other things and I'm just not a very extroverted person but um, I try to in, 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 the, in my social media account I try to really focus on public health if I have done that or not I don't know but you are welcome to um, to DM me, I check, of course, I check my, I'm not you know, an influencer, I don't have no uh, people following me, so uh, DM me if you have any questions, um, you know, if you uh, want any help with uh, applications, I would, I would, I would be happy to 
correct you or help you. And um, yeah, last. Thank you. And any questions? Thank you so much. Oh, that was such a helpful presentation. It was really amazing to be able to hear your journey. So we do have like a few minutes so we can ask a few questions. So in regards to the NHSC scholarship, do you have any recommendations for people who are trying to become part of that or who are trying to get the scholarship? volunteering, a lot of mission trips, a lot of just work in public health. So you're, you're proving that you're worthy for the scholarship. Um, mention um, your background. Uh, there are, they, are they, they prioritize specifically for, for students that might have gone to a, a low income, uh, it, it have come from a low income population, a neighborhood mm -hmm. or um, have had have been in a school where it was a primarily low and low income student. So um, these things are tend to be important, um, you know, because they, they, that, that matters. They, they, they see that as, well, you're coming from this background, you most definitely have a heart for this for this community. You know where they're coming from and you, you're gonna be pulled in that direction, one way or another. And so mention that, um, get your guidance counselors they could know that yes, there was free school lunches or uh, whatever that may be. That sounds good. And then kind of taking it, looking at a different thing. So when it comes to shadowing, when people want to shadow, what do you recommend is the best way to ask a dentist, whether it be through like a phone call, going in person, an email, or what do you suggest? situation is really not being direct to me unless you know my extension. Um, but usually emailing and um, would be a great way. I mean, yes, a lot of dentists are really busy, um, but we do check our emails. And when we see that someone's interested in, in dentistry, uh, I think 100% uh, of the time, I want to say that dentists are going to be overjoyed uh, to have you come I, like I said, dentists are type A, and so, you know, we love to teach, we love to show, we love to talk about what we're doing, and I love when, PhD, when students come in, and I get to talk the whole time that I'm doing something, and even though I have no idea what I'm saying, I'm just telling them what I'm doing, the, the materials that I'm using, I, I, because that's how we learn, right guys? That's how we learn, when we, when we teach, it's how we learn, so we're always learning. Uh, so yeah, just just shoot them an email. I think that would be the easiest way for me, unless you don't need a social media or find a dentist media that is within in your uh, in your area. Which social media is incredible. I mean, I've been able to get in contact with some amazing people just social media, and I never thought in my wildest dream. I mean, I'm older, so I'm like that. That I would have never thought that I could do that. Uh, so much easier than just, you know, yeah, so social media or email. That sounds great. Well, that's going to be all the time we have for questions. But again, thank you so much for um, being here, giving your presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, we hope everyone who is watching has been able to learn a lot. And thank you again for joining us in Fresh Central Shadow. Thank you.